So this is the property where Jacob Rogers and I, with Guilty of Treason, cut down this big red maple a few weeks ago. It was right up in there. The backstory to this property, you can see here's the front door. We had a 16 inch diameter white oak right there declining. Went right up into this spot. If we back up a little bit, when you're coming into the yard, the work order read, remove the 16 inch diameter declining white oak in the front yard. Well, right over here, right there where you see that little birch was a 24 inch diameter. It probably tapered pretty quickly to a 20 inch diameter, maybe at head height. And it went up and over the yard. It was up close to that, that red oak there. So it leaned over the front yard and it was in decline to a degree. We hadn't pruned the deadwood out of it, but we had done a lot of treatments and it was this owner's favorite tree. So as the crew members came in, I was running a contractor model at the time. So we had a very close knit group of, of subcontractors, which is common in tree care to have these small independents. And I had kind of developed a, a system to try to organize. It was kind of like herding cats, but at any rate, we had a good team and it was working well. And they came in, they would fulfill the work orders just as if they were employees, you know, but they had their own insurance and it was a system that was functioning at the time. And so the work order read verbatim, remove the 16 inch diameter declining white oak in the front yard. What I didn't say was take 10 steps out from the front yard, reach to your right and there's the tree. I didn't say that. And that tree became the focus. And they took down that tree. And I was out of town. And I get a call from the client. And she was weeping. It was incredible. Uh, what do you do? What do you say? I'm 10 hours away. I was in Columbus or something crazy like that, Ohio. And you know, she's just distraught. And you know, the best I could do is say, I'm gonna come over, we'll sit down, I'll meet. So I came over, we sat down at a dining room table, right through those glass windows, looking at this very spot. And you know, she was still in grief and I just took responsibility. You know, I talked it out with the guy that was here and you know, it's easy to point fingers and say this, that, the other thing, you know, 16 inches, it wasn't 16 inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote the quote, it was misunderstood. The responsibility is mine. You know, General MacArthur once said, do not give an instruction that can be understood. Give an instruction that cannot be misunderstood that's a significant difference so I told the owner I said I don't you're probably not anywhere close to this place but I you know one day I want you to be happy this this mistake was made that's what that's my goal and she was candid with me she says you know you're right I'm not I'm not in that place but I'm willing to trust you can you imagine somebody with the capacity of grace in them to be able to say that at a moment like that? Pretty incredible. And so I came back and I removed the original tree and we ground out this stump quite deeply in order to be able to, that was about a 30 inch diameter stump. 
and we got that rather sizable river birch in there. To her request, she wanted a river birch, which was compatible with this area. And lo and behold, come December, I get a text with a picture of this tree draped in snow, like the kind of snow that sticks to every little branch, one of those. And she's got lights out here that are on the tree. You can see them down there, little lights in the ground. And this tree was lit up with snow on it. It was incredible. And the text simply said, I'm so happy with my tree. That was something. That was a lot of, uh, a lot of pain, <laughs> a lot of suffering. And now you're going to get to hear the rest of the story as Jacob so kindly interviewed her and she so kindly gave the interview recording and you can just maybe just uh just tell the story about how yeah just tell oh, the story okay. <laughs> and you'll and you'll edit it according yeah, okay yeah, all right okay. okay so in the summer uh, uh kevin and i met and looked at a tr an oak that was dead and we decided that it should come down and but we decided we'd do it in the winter and so that winter that following winter um you know, I'm just waiting to find out when he was going to cut that. They they called and they said it was going to be um, whenever. I don't, it, but they didn't give me a precise date. So I knew it was going to, it was coming up, but I didn't know when. Well, I came home from work one night and it was dark. Back in the days of voicemails or like answering machines. And I walked in, I saw I had a message, I took it and it said, it was not Kevin, it was one of his guys. And he said, uh, we want to know what you want us to do with this wood because there's a lot more than we thought there would be. And so, you know, it's dark. I get ready to call him back and I walk outside. I'm like, I call him back and I'm like, but you didn't cut the tree yet. And he said, oh yeah, it's, we got it down and then the wood's all gone. And I walked around the corner and I saw, ah. And I said, you cut the wrong tree. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was just yeah. panicked, you know. And he said, no, he said, he said the one in the front. I was like, don't tell me, you cut the wrong tree. And, and I said, you have to have Kevin call me. I mean, I cried for days. Because what happened was, so this is where the, he, the, the guy that cut the tree, Consider this the front of the house. Kevin had said to him, cut the oak in the front of the house. Well, my front door is there, but this looks like the front of the house. So there, that was what the confusion was. Plus, I live in the woods. I have a lot of oak trees. And it was winter. So, so I mean, I was just so devastated. It was a 150-year-old oak. And really a prime... A, in a prime location, it was the my favorite tree in the woods um, because it was right outside my big windows and <laughs> I have gardens all around it. So um, so Kevin called, of course he was devastated too. I mean, the, is there a worse mistake that you could make as an arborist than cut a 150 year old wrong tree? So um, so he came and he, I, he was really upset and I was so impressed with the way he handled it. He didn't, you know, try to minimize it or anything. He took total responsibility for it. And he said, I'm gonna use a MacArthur quote. He said, it's not you give directions that can be understood, you give directions that can't be misunderstood. And that's of course what he did when he said, cut the oak in the front. And because I didn't know what day they were coming, I mean, I could have marked it a hundred different ways, which one to cut and, but you know, they, they just came and did it when no one was here. So um, Kevin said, you know, I'm gonna make this right. And of course, he, he, um, the insurance paid for it. His insurance paid for the value of the tree. And then Kevin then came later and cut the correct tree for free and, and cut it up and um, stacked it even, which wasn't part of the original quote, of course. Um, but so he did that took care of the the, the right tree, um, 
uh, submitted a claim for the wrong tree, and then he said he was going to plant another oak. Um, but then we started thinking. My son was here from New Hampshire, and my daughter and from Chicago. We were looking at it, and, you know, sort of commiserating about the lost tree. And then we decided it would be foolish to plant another oak because I'm, I'm not old, but I'm sort of old. I'm not going to live 150 years <laughs> to see a tree replaced um, for that one. So that's when we decided we would do, um, we would do something di entirely different. And that's when we decided to come up with the, the idea of the birch. And so we did the, the, you know, the birch clump which then changed the whole look of everything, but it really is so pretty. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I mean, it's not my beloved oak, but it is definitely pretty there now. And it still feels like a, a you know, a prime gardening spot in my, in my yard. So Kevin did what he could, and he was, I mean, he couldn't have, he couldn't have uh, behaved better about the way that he made it as right as he could. Yeah, and now we're doing another tree for you today, so. <laughs> oh yeah, and I've had him so, do stuff since then, yeah. along a lot of stuff before that. I mean, I really do trust him. And, you know, it really, it, it was so good the way he handled that, 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 you know, I still have confidence in him. And he's a smart arborist. He does good work. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, uh, yeah, for wanting to know. <laughs> And here we were back doing another job. So the moral of the story is, if you're willing to take responsibility and if there's a capacity for grace somewhere in the relationship, uh, a potentially very tumultuous situation can come out on a positive note. And this, this story is a testament to that. And hopefully, by documenting it, uh, we've, we've given somebody an opportunity to maybe uh, repeat this. Not that we want it repeated, but when things do happen, just keep your chin up, take responsibility, and attempt to make it right. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I encourage you to like and subscribe. We post every week sometime on Sunday, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Take care. Playing the game of trees